Good morning, and today I am reviewing Full Metal Alchemist. No, not that one. Not that one either. Getting closer. Seriously. No, no, this review is on the last Full Metal related content imported from Japan. Everyone, please welcome the live action Full Metal Alchemist 2017. Released in Japan in December of 2017, and not long after in America, the film, according to a Crunchyroll article, is ranked first out of all the film showings that weekend. But the only reason for that was because Full Metal was the only anticipated film to come out, and the movie wasn't competing against any other big film at that time. And to uh, bring the film down more, its earnings and reception wasn't that great. According to Comic Book, the film only earned half of what the Gintama live-action film made over the summer, and even less compared to the Assassination Classroom live-action film. Then there is the IMDb score. Oh boy. Yeah, this film isn't looking too good. In Japan, that is. Uh, well, here in America too. But, as an American and fan of the original works made by Hiromu Arakawa, I'm going to judge director Fumihiko Sori's interpretation of the story and see what he keeps in and what he takes out. By the way, big spoiler here for the original shows and manga, since I will be talking about certain characters and what really happens to them, so watch at your own risk. Also, warning, a lot of the actor names are, well, in Japanese, so I am sorry for any poor mispronunciation of any Japanese names, but please bear with me. I'm just a dumb American. I'm sorry. With that out of the way, let's go! Alright, this film is based off a different visual medium that I have seen, so throughout this section I will be comparing this movie to the original and Brotherhood show. Mostly Brotherhood, because that's where most of the comparisons are, and I've never seen the second half of the original. For reasons that I'm not going to talk about, but let's just get to the summary of the story. Edward and Alphonse Elric attempted the forbidden action of human transmutation to save their mother who died unexpectedly. When it failed, Alphonse lost his body and Edward lost his left leg, then his right arm later for binding his brother's soul to a suit of armor nearby. They missed the original and Brotherhood. So far, so good. A few years passed and Ed starts work with the military to find a powerful item called the Philosopher's Stone. After a failed attempt of obtaining the stone from a phony priest, Ed was forced back to Central with Colonel Mustaine and Lieutenant Hawkeye. Where they go over why Ed joined the military to begin with, which is pointless to go over, unless you've never seen or read the original manga and shows. Oh, this is a rush explanation for those who haven't read or seen the manga and shows. Well, this is already fun now, isn't it? After that, we are introduced to two other characters, Captain Hughes and General Hakuro. By the way, I have no idea who the heck Hakuro was, but found out later that he was a more prominent character in the original show and not in Brotherhood. So I was super confused as to who he was and thought he was supposed to be a King Bradley, only to find out that he was the film's replacement for the character. Well, that's a serious downgrade, isn't it? After Ed and Hughes leaves, General Hakuro tells Mustang that he should introduce Ed to an alchemist known for creating a talking chimera and hopes that he can help Ed in the search for the stone. Ed takes the offer and this is show Tucker with Al and Winry. And yeah, Winry isn't supposed to be around for most of these scenes compared to the original shows, but Ed and Al are supposed to be together all the time, but the two are separated in the movie, so I don't know what's going on anymore. After their talk, Tucker tells Ed that he can't help but know someone else who can. A man that goes by the name Dr. Marco, who is last seen in a town further away. Now this is the first sign to the fans that the plot is indeed rushed in this movie. Mostly because it wasn't Tucker who introduced Ed to Dr. Marco, it was Alex Luis Armstrong, who found Marco by accident, but he's nowhere to be found in the film, so... Ed and Winry leave to find the doctor while Al stays behind with Tucker where Tucker, instead of another certain walking suit of armor, tells Ed that his memories might be fake. I never understood this arc from the original shows and manga, mostly because the claims are coming from characters that Al shouldn't hold so much trust in to begin with. Tucker might make a bit more sense, 
But in a later scene, Al said that Tucker told him that Ed was too young to perform a soul-binding alchemy, therefore Al must be fake. And that doesn't raise any flags for you, Al? I don't know, I never liked this arc to begin with, and the film doesn't make it any better. Ed and Winry find Dr. Marco, and the three of them talk about the existence of the Philosopher's Stone, but before Marco was about to spill the beans, their conversation was cut short by a homunculi named Lust, who tells Ed to shut up, then kills the doctor and disappears. Before passing away, Dr. Marco gives Ed a small note containing part of the transmutation circle needed to create the stone and tells him to go to Laboratory 5. Wait, why was Marco killed? In front of Ed, nonetheless? For tension? Fine, whatever. Also, Lust revealing herself here kind of makes her stupid, doesn't it? She should know that Ed isn't going to sit by and not do anything because his enemy told him to. Whatever. Ed returns to Tucker and finds a newly formed Chimera, and us fans know what happens. Figuring out the Chimera is Nina, Ed beats up the scientist until he was stopped by Al, who throws in his own threat, and the military comes and arrests the worst father and most hated character in the whole series. By the way, Scar was also cut out, so it's up to your imagination as to what happens to Nina. After that, Ed, Hughes, and Lieutenant Ross work together in trying to find the location of Laboratory 5. When they were failing, General Hakuro enters and tells the group where he thinks the lab is, and Ed runs off to investigate it. Hughes was then left behind to discover the true location of Laboratory 5, that fits within a pattern that looks similar to a transmutation circle. But before he can think too much about it, Lust enters the room to kill him, only to be stabbed in the face and Hughes escaping. Now, Hughes' death is in the film is very much like the shows and manga, but instead of a Ross look-alike, it is a Mustang look-alike. And as messed up as it sounds, there was a reason why in the original story that pretending to mean Mustang goes against the homunculi's plan. If you were paying attention, there was a few times that Lust called Ed a precious sacrifice, and she used this as an excuse not to kill Ed. And if you've been paying attention in Brotherhood, not only calls Ed a sacrifice, but she also calls Mustang a sacrifice. So, framing Mustang to have him locked up and possibly executed later goes against what their plans were, that would need him later. So not only is the plot rushed, but it also sounds like someone didn't get very far into their research into the original story, which can't possibly happen because a certain creator is a part of the writing team! Sorry. After their day in the Not Lab 5, Ed was picked up by the military and locked in a room with Hawkeye, who tells him that Hughes has been killed and the military believes it was Mustang, which is Unlike of Hawkeye to sit by and not do anything until Ed comes into the room, but we can't have more than one strong female character type now, can we? If you call the film Winry a strong female. But out of the two, she really is, while well, Hawkeye just stands there big-eyed. The two escape and head to the real Laboratory 5, where a real Mustang was at and reveals that the Lieutenant Ross standing in front of him was really Envy in disguise. Turns out that Hughes had told him about the lab before he passed away, which in turn found the lab. Twice in a row, the homunculi failed in killing someone before they revealed some important information. Great. Round of applause for them. After a short fight, Mustang is injured and the homunculi run off, with Ed trying to catch up. He comes across a large room where he finds his unmoving brother, knocked out Winry, and a gun-wielding show Tucker. Again, there was no scar to kill him earlier, so of course he had to come back before the movie is over. After Tucker convinces Ed to remove his automill arm, he reveals that the military was producing philosopher's stones and how they were made. Human souls. Then he aims to kill Ed, only for Lust to come in and kill Tucker instead. Fail number three in killing someone before they revealed more secrets. General Hakaro then steps out of the shadows and reveals more of his schemes to use the philosopher's stone to create an unkillable army, only to have the army kill him instead of following orders. But this is fail number four, as Lust took one attempt at him and just stopped. I so can't wait for that burning scene, Lust. And I swear, it better be awesome. As Envy and Lust were leaving the chaos, Mustang catches up to them and attacks Envy. Lust turns to attack Mustang, only for Ed to come in and protect him from her attack. Lust then takes the time to reveal her Philosopher's Stone, trying to play the I am immortal and you can't kill me act to scare the two guys. But after seeing that Envy hasn't fully recovered during their very long conversation, Ed made the connection that it is possible to kill him and another fight ensues. Mustang has this moment of burning Envy's last bit of life, then turns to Lust and takes her stone. Which, unlike the show, Lust was the only one to be burned to death by Mustang. 
which is much cooler and much more crueler in there. And Lust was the one who gave the stone to Ed, sacrificing himself in hopes of helping those who gave him something he always wanted. Completely ruining a full character arc for Envy, by the way. At least, that's what happens in Brotherhood. What happened to the original? You know what? Never mind. Mustang gives the stone to Ed, who decided not to trade it for Al's body, leaving the two boys stuck with the bodies they had in the beginning of the film. What a wonderful waste of time that was!